What we're going to do in this demonstration is a quick overview of DFS, Distributed File System. Now the whole point of DFS is to abstract shared folders out on the network. Normally users have to go to a large number of servers to find all their shared folders. With DFS you can centralize all the shared folders they need to access into one simple hierarchy. So DFS will open that up, Distributed File System. To set up DFS, you first set up a root, a DFS root, and users would connect to the root and then see all the shared folders underneath the root. In this example, we're going to set up a domain DFS root. If that's the case, then it asks for which domain we want to set up a DFS root for. So our domain here is westsim.private. Which server will host the root? I'm on server slsrv3. Dot West Sim dot private. What's the root name going to be? Now you want to be careful here. Look at the preview. This is what users will type in to get to the DFS root. So we could just put, uh, how about info? So if users want to access the DFS root, they'll type in whack whack West Sim dot private whack info or what's more likely is that you will map a network drive to that location for them. So you can call it info, you can call it DFS, you can call it whatever you want, but be aware that this is the name the users will see. Also notice that the share to be used will be called info, and the share called info will be placed on the computer in question. So we said the SLSRV3 computer will have the DFS root share called info. And we'll click finish. And there we go. There's our root. Now the root, the users will see this on the right hand side. That's what the actual root is. It's actually on SLSRV3 slash info. But the users all they have to type in is westsim.private slash info. Let's take a look at the file system. And on my X drive, I made a folder, a shared folder called DFS root. And looking at the sharing of that folder, I share that out as info. So that was already taken care of before I got into the wizard. So let's clarify a few things here. We have a folder name of DFS underscore root. That folder name has a share name of info. The DFS version of that is westsim.private slash info. So just to test this out, we can go to start run and type in westsim.private slash info. And there we go. It opens up the DFS root. I put a document in the root share just for a test example. And going back to the actual file system, DFS root, there's the test document in the root share. The thing to notice is that when we went to the run dialog box, we didn't type in whack whack server name whack share name. We typed in whack whack domain name whack share name. And therein lies part of the magic of DFS. Okay, now also part of DFS is that we're going to create some DFS links. So when someone accesses the root, they'll see what appears to be subfolders. When in fact those subfolders could be pointed towards shared folders spread out on the network. So you right-click the root, you say new link. So the link name, be careful here because the link name is what the users would type in or what the users would see. We'll do a link name of sales data. Okay, so it's asking us which shared folder to use. Let's go back to the file system for this computer. In the file system, I set up a shared folder already called sales data. And in the sales data folder, I put a couple quarterly sales reports. And I shared out sales data as just sales. That's the share name. So the share name is sales. Sales data is the folder name. And for link name, let's change that. Let's change that to sales information. So the path is going to be whack whack. SLSRV3 is the server name, whack. Sales was the share name. So again, let's clarify this. 
The actual folder containing the data is called sales data. The share folder name is different. The share name is just sales. The DFS link name is sales information. So we have three different names to keep track of. Sales information is what the users will see. Sales is what someone browsing the network would see. Sales data is what somebody sitting at this computer accessing these hard drives would see. So back to our DFS link wizard here. So there's the path to our target. And we'll say this is our DFS link. So there's the DFS link. But there's the actual target, whack, whack server name, whack share name. Now this share name can be anywhere on the network. It doesn't have to be on this same computer. And let's go ahead and test everything out then. In the file system, I have the shared folder sales data with four quarterly sales reports. We'll see if that's what we get when we browse the shared folder. In the root, we see the document in the root share, and we see sales information. Opening up sales information, we see the quarterly sales reports. Now, to the user, again, it appears as though sales information is a subfolder right there at the root, when in fact, that share information could have come from anywhere on the network. So it's making things look very nice and easy for the users when behind the scenes DFX is actually going across the network and grabbing the information. Actually, technically, DFS is redirecting the user across the network to the shared folder to the information. So we'll set up a second link. This one will be accounting data. Path to the target share. On this computer, I set up another shared folder on the C drive called Accounting Data. Accounting Data, I set up a couple subfolders, QuickBook Files, for example. So the folder name is Accounting Data. The share name is ACCT Data. So share name, whack, whack, SL, SRB3, ACCT DATA is the share name. And there's our second link. Let's test that out. Accessing the westsim.private slash info DFS route, we see accounting information and sales information. Opening up accounting information, we'll see, there we go. It took us right there. It took us to the Peachtree Files folder and the QuickBooks Files folder, and there's our QuickBook Files. So again, the thing to notice is with DFS, Everything appears to be in one spot when, in fact, the targets, the target information can actually come from different spots on the network, different shares on the network.